the informally, we want to talk about the world game. It's called football. Uh, and the man we always go to, our man is Athos Syrianos from FNR, Football Nation Radio. Mate, um, what are we to make of the last week in football? Um, I know all the nations now, the major competitions around the world, have gone into international mode, mm -hmm. and a whole series of internationals being played right around the globe. But this last weekend of the EPL and some of the other competitions, they were mind-blowing. Some of the results, did you see any of them coming? I saw the cricket scores, George, oh, that I think oh, you're alluding to. And yeah. uh, we also saw the transfer window slam shut for another season, and not without its drama, of course, in the last, uh, last few hours. Um, did, you, did you understand that Aston Villa scored seven against the reigning champions of the EPL, Liverpool, uh, in, a, in what was a nine-goal thriller? When I, when I saw the result, I thought it was it might have been an under-23 game or a youth game or, or something completely different. I couldn't believe that the Liverpool, who just won the European Cup and the Premier League, were smashed 7-2. And it really could have been more, George. Liverpool were, weren't defending very well. The Spanish goalkeeper, Adrian, had an absolute howler. Um, we know Ad, uh, Alisson, the number one, is going to be out for up to another four or five weeks. So uh, some, some pretty... Uh, big questions being thrown Liverpool's way and uh, they've got a Merseyside derby straight after this uh, international break uh, with Everton undefeated 4-0. and they're, they're on top of the world at the moment, so it'll be a big one. Well, it wasn't just a, an upset for the Reds, it was uh, uh, for, 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 uh, for Liverpool, but it was and also a big shock for the team that is acknowledged as one of the biggest teams in the world, Manchester United. Mm. No one, especially at Old Trafford, saw Spurs come raid the place and leave with six goals in the tank. I'm sure Jose Mourinho is wishing the Amazon documentary would be filmed now rather than last season. But yeah. to be smashed 6-1 at Old Trafford, it's, it's unheard of. And yeah. Tottenham is a, a very good side. But the, the Man United squad on paper that, that went out there, Bruno Fernandes, uh, Pogba, Martial, these are world-class players. So massive embarrassment for United and not, not a win to start the season, not a performance to start the season with. Oh, no, no, no. And they started with a bang, with a penalty inside the first minute. Yeah, they did. Uh, but it should also be said they lost a player. I didn't think that losing a player uh, after about half an hour would, create, would cause such havoc, mm -hmm. but it certainly did. Uh, what does it say about young Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Has he got a long-term future at... Uh, Old Trafford, or is he coming under increasing pressure to maybe make room for a guy called Pochettino? Well, there was a lot of hype uh, uh, heading into this season. If you remember, they, they came home like a, with a wet sail, didn't they, last season? They finished third. Mm. There was a lot of hype around Jaden Sancho coming. Correct. And as we know, he hasn't come. Uh, no. Borussia Dortmund have been very adamant that he will stay with Dortmund at least until January when this will all start again. Uh, they've made a few last minute deals. They brought in Cavani and uh, Tellez from Porto on the deadline day. So it will strengthen the side. Yeah. Um, Cavani was an interesting one. If they brought in Sancho, Cavani would be the, the cherry on top or the icing, but at the moment he is the cake. And at 33 years old, yes, he is a proven striker, but you'd think a club of Manchester United's caliber would be able to bring in someone with, with a lot more quality. Has he got the ability to do a Zlatan and, you know, create some mayhem in the middle? Absolutely. He's a, he's a world-class striker and he's got a great supporting cast with Fernandes and Pogba and Martial. But United, they've already, they have already dropped two, uh, two pretty big games and they could have easily lost a third to Brighton. So they need to start uh, putting together better performances and getting some wins on the board. Uh, Chelsea, everyone's uh, acknowledged uh, they've probably had the, um, the best outcome from the, uh, the window. They've, they've picked up three or four players, mm. they've spent some money, and they, they appear to be the sort of players that Frank Lampard needs to build a, a really formidable team. They went and uh, raided the Bundesliga, didn't they? They uh, brought Timo Werner, who was uh, one of the best uh, strikers, or has been for the last two or three years, and uh, Kai Havertz, who uh, has been doing some incredible things uh, at such a young age already. Uh, neither of whom are really yet set to fire just yet, but it, it is still early days and uh, they still have a bit of, bit of ground to, to make up because sides like Everton and uh, Aston Villa, who, who spent a bit of money in the off-season, are really really uh, putting, putting their best foot forward in these first, this first month. His best start by Everton, I think, forever. 
Absolutely, yeah. Whoa. Carlo Ancelotti came in, he had a plan, he brought in players uh, for the now. They're not necessarily looking to, to build Camus Rodriguez, uh, Alan, all these guys are of the age, 28, 29, where they have to make an impact straight away, mm. and they're doing so. Uh, Richarlison is uh, continuing his, his hot form, and uh, they're, looking, they're looking the goods in the, in the first few weeks. A couple of sides that you touched on, mm. uh, evident, terrific uh, pickups, and, and I thought uh, the other one that really has uh, done pretty well with a couple of decent pickups was Aston Villa. In fact, uh, so much so that we're seeing um, the former Manchester United goalkeeper, uh, Mark Bosnich, who mm. was, of course, a star at Aston Villa. He was. Not, he doesn't know whether to cry or laugh <laughs> because he's enjoying himself. Um, Ross Barkley stepped in, and next, next to Grealish, could well be a terrific pick. Two uh, the brightest young players England has produced over the last few years. Ross Barkley probably didn't reach the heights uh, that he did at Everton when he went to Chelsea, but he is a, a very good player, and if he fits into a side like Aston Villa well, then uh, they could do some damage. They just survived relegation last season yeah. and were tipped to be around that mark, but. In the Premier League, we've seen with sides like Leicester that if you win those 50-50 games, then it can go a long way in determining your fate. Question for you, and it's a question that's going to be asked a lot now, mm. the difference between playing these games behind closed doors with no fans and playing in front of fans. Suddenly, those home games don't have the same impact, do they? That's correct, that's correct. When you're playing in such a hostile atmosphere, and we know in the UK, George, it's very often life and death, as it would be in Spain and in Italy. Uh, so I think it would be a massive advantage, or not necessarily an advantage, but it's a good equaliser, uh, the fans not being there. Let's come home. Uh, A-League is, of course, finished, mm. but they're gathering themselves. There are a lot of talk behind the scenes. What are we to make of some of the decisions that uh, the FFA has made, and also some of the things we've discovered uh, with the PFA coming to terms with some of the, the, uh, the clubs? Yes, well, uh, they finally came to an agreement, the players and the club. So we know that the salary cap for next season will be reduced by around 1.1 million. So it'll sit around the 2, 2.1 million mark. And clubs will now be allowed to uh, negotiate with players' contracts and almost create uh, custom contracts for the players to, to fit them all in. Um, but I don't think too many changes will be made to existing player contracts. So if you've signed for the two or three years, then I think their contracts uh, should be okay. Transfers being introduced. We've seen already Sydney FC pick up some money for a guy who's done terrific work for them for the last couple of years, uh, young Lafondra. Yes, sir, uh, who you and I know quite well. He, he did have a contract, I believe, in, in his contract where if he had scored 15 or more goals, another year would be triggered. And uh, from what it looks like, they've triggered the, this extra year and used that to loan him to, to India. But he does love Sydney. He's got it, uh, the Harbour Bridge tattooed on his arm. So it, it will go with him wherever he goes. Um, and then we, we look over to Adelaide and they've done some pretty impressive business as well. Um, Riley McGree, who was one of their bright young players. The Scorpion King. The Scorpion King. He's been invited to the Puskas Awards a few years ago. He's uh, been bought, uh, been bought, which I think is really significant, uh, for a fee of around a million dollars by Charlotte FC, uh, an MLS side who doesn't actually exist yet. Just, just yet. Just yet. Um, so then they've loaned him to Birmingham in the championship. Well, this is the sort of thing that the New York, before mm. they became a franchise in America, the MLS, they, they offered up young David Villa and Frank Lampard to Melbourne City before they were actually uh, a, a, an entity. So interesting times, that model, but uh, we wish him well. He, he's, he's quite a character and his improvement, let's hope, will add another layer of support to the young players that are coming through to play for the Socceroos. Well, I liked the path that he took. I think that is... If we are to look at a model, I think his is the one to go. Play 80 to 90 games in the A-League, which is a pretty good league for, for players to develop in. It's a great standard. So then when they go to these clubs, they can make an impact straight away rather than competing with the four or five other players in their same position. And we're hearing that uh, more young players will be offered opportunities to play in the A-League. Yes, well, as a result of uh, COVID, it could be a blessing in disguise for many of these young guys. There aren't too many young players who have uh, moved away, so clubs have really kept the, the core 
uh, group of, of youngsters and we know that there could be some changes to the NPL competitions which right. we'll see more games for, for younger players right around Australia. And the Youth League competition, is that going to be extended at, at any chance of that happening? I think the Youth League will, will stay because I think they, the FFA likes the idea of the, all the young A-League sides playing against each other but that'll be a, an extra competition on top of what hopefully is a, a longer uh, a season in, in the NPL and gives the A League youth more of an opportunity, more of an opportunity to get game time. Fantastic! Uh, if you want to know any more about the uh, what's happening in the world game, make sure you listen in to FNR Football Nation Radio. Just download the app if you haven't got it. Otherwise, you can follow us. Make sure you follow us on theinformer.tv because uh, we have Athos Sirianos join us each and every week. Thank you, mate. Catch you next week. Thanks, George.